When security breach came out, everyone knew who the big draws were. Roxanne Wolf, the equivalent to Foxy in both shape and popularity, and Vanny. It was clear just from the reaction to these two characters that they were going to be the next big thing when it came to the FNAF fandom. Two lovely ladies, one with a fierce demeanor and the other with daddy issues. Oh yes, they were going to be big. Everyone knew it, Steel Wool knew it, it was a fact. What nobody expected was that there was going to be another character, or characters depending on how you look at it, who were going to absolutely boom in popularity. To the point where they pretty much have their own subgenre of fnaf like but not quite fictions and art surrounding specifically them. And that would be the sun and the moon, the daycare attendant. First reactions to sun and moon were relatively quiet from what I saw. They were spotted here and there, they were noticed, but it didn't really explode with the same intrigue as with the lore surrounding Vanny or Roxy's deal. So, what happened? Well, security breach came out. Roxy got a few scenes, so that was fine. Vanny's role was downplayed, as I mentioned in my cut Vanny video. I honestly believe that the sun and moon also had their role cut down, as I will get into later. And yet something happened. In a total screen time that would probably only come out to 15 minutes, the daycare attendant became one of the most popular FNAF characters. Not too unheard of, but I've had people tell me they just got into or got back into FNAF because of the sun and moon. I've had people tell me that they're not into FNAF, but they are into the sun and moon and their separate universe. They got their own sub-fandom. And yes, this has happened to characters before, kind of, but the absolute swing from Hey Look Moon Man to my scrunkly baby Jared even me, and I was really excited for them. I don't think Steel Wool expected this amount of popularity. Do you know why? Because there was absolutely zero merch for either of them for months after the game's release. Not even mystery figures. The only thing was eventually a plush that came with the collector's edition, the box art of the collector's edition was based on the sun and moon too, even though their role in the story is pretty much done after the daycare section. Sure, it was probably to go along with the plush, but I believe the plush must have been a response to popularity. They had an expensive Vanny Yoatus plush coming out at the same time, but that wasn't the one that came with the collector's edition. And I have something else that backs this up. This. This is a leaked preview of a future line of Funko merch, and yes, this person has been correct in the past about this. Look at how many Sun and Moon toys and plus highs are coming out. And look at how long it took for them to even so much as be teased. It could be to release them alongside Ruin, but from the leaks and the supposed date of Ruin, I'm not sure if they'll be dropping near each other. I think that maybe Steel Wool, or whatever representative of Scott's is managing the merch, realized that this character was getting knock-off merch by the dozens. Knew that the collector's edition Sun and Moon plush was out of the casual market's price range, and decided enough was enough. Or maybe the FNAF AR ones were losing sales and they had to shake it up. Personally, I think it's the former. But in a weird twist, I think this intense popularity might have been helped by an unexpected thing. The cut content. The design is sound and the character has just as much presence as the others, so maybe the reason nobody was expecting Sun and Moon to be money makers is because of something in this cut content. Let's speculate on that. In the trailers that displayed early Sun and Moon gameplay. The daycare is shown turning from night to day and when the footage is spliced together you can seemingly put together a sequence where the moon follows Gregory down a slide, coming after him. And then we see Sunny hopping up closer in front of the same slide. I believe that the daycare sequence was supposed to be like this, Gregory gets into the daycare and the sun follows him around. When the big clock rolls over, it turns nighttime and then the moon chases him. 
then it rolls over again and it's back to the sun. The sun is safe, but dogs you. The moon is dangerous. It makes sense. I still think Gregory was supposed to get the generators since the cords are still there, but I'm not sure why. Maybe to force the lights to stay on and open the doors. It is also possible that the sun would stop in place and count, as in his idle animation, so that too is possible. I only lean towards the following mechanic because that's closer to what sun currently does. In the current game, you go into the daycare and are followed around by sun who is safe but keeps returning you to this tower, until you shut the lights off and the moon comes out to chase you. Then sun throws you out once you get the lights on. I would like to say first off that I think the switching from day to night would have been exceptionally creepy and that I would have loved that angle. I would also like to say that I think the fact that it didn't make it into the game is one of the main reasons that sun and moon are so popular. The section with them is shorter, significantly less difficult than it would have been in that scenario, and largely less uncomfortable. This would have directly portrayed Sun as untrustworthy. That at any moment he can flip and become the much more threatening Moon. Thus making him scarier and less endearing. In the current scenario, Sun goes out of his way to encourage you not to turn the lights off. Gregory does so of his own volition, and by going against what Sun says it casts him in a more sympathetic light. We know Gregory wouldn't have been safe in the daycare as Moon would have come out during the hourly charge anyway, but this did spur them on. Unlike a scenario where Gregory was an entirely helpless passenger aboard Mr. Moon's crazy train. Imagine if Moon is trying to actively kill you and you can't escape because Sun keeps dogging you through the entire play area. Likely prattling on about magic markers and patty cake. Imagine if he just stops and counts down as Sun, playfully counting down for when he's going to come get you, oblivious to the fact that Moon's about to try to kill you. Or maybe not oblivious. I could reason imagine that a version of Sun playing with one of his charges like this could be a rather sadistic one, which would fit in with Moon's unwholesome tone. Comparing this to Sun trying to corral you in the middle of a playroom is small potatoes. This current son we have seems genuinely concerned for what's going to happen, to the point that we can't assume he's faking. And I can't see that translating into whatever this old build had planned. But my point is that the first impression would have been significantly different. You would be surprised how much that can affect things, but let's take this further into another example. I can't speak for everyone but I wholeheartedly believe that the moment that won so many people over for the sun was this moment at the counter. Before that, the sun is overbearing and creepy, going on about games, making threatening sounding comments, and constantly blocking you. But when you get to the counter, sun becomes anxious, fumbling, stuttering. Sun goes from being an uncomfortable kitty figure haunting you, like an overeager costumed mascot, to betraying an amount of vulnerability. Sun effectively yanks himself back out of Uncanny Valley. And this directly relates to the Sun's popularity. Fanon interpretation of the Sun tends to hinge directly on the anxious and nervous demeanor in this moment. I'm not saying that's a wrong way to look at it either. I'm just saying that this legit could have just been a moment of nervousness, just because of the situation and the fact that it was latched onto so wholeheartedly as a character trait shows that the scene must have played a significant role in that visualization. I'm not sure how the scene could have existed back in the scenario where the moon and sun are chasing you, but it might have. But I think it would have been less impactful if it followed this long chase sequence where sun is driving you insane. Moon is a little more complicated, but I think having Sun's moment in mind assists in pulling Moon the rest of the way. Moon is creepy, uncomfortable, haunting, but the common consensus from the community doesn't actually seem to be that he's evil. I mean, some people likely do, but the common belief is that he is fully affected by the virus. Perhaps, but we do not see the other side of Moon. What is Moon actually like? 
we only know that children are terribly afraid of him. Well, a large portion of the fandom have actually been remarkably soft on the moon. Portraying him at worst as a grumpy Gus who has a hard time opening up and trusting people and at best as a gentle nightman who's just been trapped by the virus. Of course, there are some notably more creepy interpretations, but my point is that this soft moon has such a foothold that something must have caused it. Likely, it is the Sunday soft on the sun, soft on the moon. You get the one, you get that other one. And again, I think this might have led from that portrayal. The interpretations and this general consensus started to spread like wildfire within weeks of security breaches release and while I hate that there might have been a huge section of moon gameplay and a possible daycare attendant shattering event that we missed out on, the lack of these could have also assisted in this attachment. This is the worst we saw of moon and this is the worst we saw of sun. We didn't see them leave the pizza plex, and loose ends like that encourage fans to speculate on what they think happened next. And do you know what all this resulted in? The sun and the moon being practically beloved. So much fan art, so many fan works, one of the biggest ships in FNAF as of now is sun and moon paired up with reader self-insert. Look at all the fake merchandise. Look on Redbubble or ETSE and see the sheer amount of Sun, Moon, and Superstar Daycare stuff. The Sun and Moon are a real big deal, and now is the time to capitalize, right? Now, here was where I was going to talk about how I think Sun and Moon should come back in ruin because they're so popular with the fan base, and since technically Freddy shouldn't be there anymore. Except, after I wrote that section, I hesitated a long time and then slowly backpedaled a little. I think it is very, very likely that Sun and or Moon, likely Moon, might appear in ruin. Perhaps in a broken state, like I believe this possible eclipse form might have been but have no evidence for. And that should be a good thing since I want to see them again. But I also have this tentative fear that Steel Wool might, uh, misread the audience. Fnaf's kind of like a monkey's paw. You may want something, but there's a catch. You want your favorite characters together again? All dead in a fire. You want to know more about Michael Afton? Dead in a fire. You want to figure out the truth about Vanny? She's dying in a fire. Okay, obviously I'm exaggerating, but my point is that would probably be a bad move. FNAF has a history of killing off fan favorites. Let's spare the son please. He's all I have left. And yes, I did notice that Eclipse's eyes flicker like he's burning. But jokes aside, so that is why I think the daycare attendant is so beloved, why they are only now getting merch, and a sneak peek into the writhing anxiety I feel about losing someone I love again. Rest in charred pieces my porcelain-faced baby. Wait, if he burned in the fire inside Lefty, then how in the 